the um, uh, our next speaker is Mick Hardrag, and um, come on up and let's hear from you. Who you do? Let me just I want to recognize a neighbor of mine who happens to be here um, today. Um, we are both in different capacities. Um, I would like to recognize the Secretary Treasurer of the UWA Social Workers, um, Gary Rockner. <laughs> we pass each other every day. We're at the same floor at 888 15th Good to see you. Nice to see you too. All right, thank you and good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Makua Ray, and I and here representing Coalition of the Uninsured and Underinsured for Single Payer, which is a new coalition formed in Washington, D.C. of the last summer, and um, so inspired by conversations with Jerry Tucker, who's here, uh, as well as Joel Siegel, who's here, and I want to thank Mark Hudson for the invitation to be here and participate in that. So lessons from 2009. Whoa, okay. Personally, I'm new to the entire labor organizing community, and I want to say it's a great honor to be here with you. Uh, I'm not a member of any labor organization. I'm just a guy who's really a musical artist from Washington, D.C., and has used his music as a way to mobilize community around different issues, and um, definitely finds a great challenge uh, with the health care issue particularly amongst people of my generation, because we think ourselves to be uh, incapable of getting ill or ever needing insurance of these kind of this attitude. And it's a, it's honestly, it's a prevailing attitude, and I think it's a major issue. It's one of the lessons I've been learning in terms of doing outreach to community. It's the discovery that there's a lot of lethargy with the younger generations for a variety of reasons. I can't really sum it up in a few minutes, but um, the issue, as I've been learning as I go, uh, is far more complicated uh, than we can really sum up from only one perspective. And that's because different groups have different interests in uh, why it's important to them. And that's been one of the challenges, is finding a way to sum it up that really encourages and engages more, um, more people. And the term universal, this was interesting for me as well in this last year in terms of terminology. Uh, we, we understand that term universal has been usurped by a lot of various interests. The health insurance companies love that word. And so, you know, when I first got introduced to the idea, I was using the term universal health care. And of course then soon discovered that the insurance companies consider, oh yeah, it's universal, everybody can buy it from us. <laughs> so, language is a big, big deal in this issue, and I've really been learning that. And it uh, comes as no surprise to many of you, but people are viewed as commodities, specifically, particularly in this country. And that is a, uh, it's a hurdle, you know, um, whereas the idea of the human scope of the issue is sort of pushed to the side and we're looking at people in terms of facts and figures and numbers and there's more need from what I've learned over the past year to uh, really emphasize the human story uh, in, in the issue. One major lesson is that Congress is supposed to work for the workers. I want to say that again. Congress is supposed to work for the workers, for the people. Uh, I had the opportunity, along with Dr. Flowers and Mark Dudzik and a number of others, to, to be in the halls of Congress and to walk the halls and visit offices and things like this. And it's a very, it's a profound experience, really, you know, um, as many of you are aware. Um, but it's also a little disappointing and disheartening to realize that, you know, there's a variety of people out there lobbying for a variety of things, and you come and go, and a lot of their pocketbooks tend to be quite larger than ours. So that, that does uh, raise that issue. Um, one of the things uh, that I've been participating with uh, since the Healthcare Now conference in St. Louis over the, over the fall 
is the messaging uh, around single payer because a lot of us from exposure to this issue over time, we automatically know what that means. But when I go into the community and I bring up these words, uh, there's a lot of preconceived notion about what that might actually mean. And then you have to go through that education cycle again and again, which is just part of the course. Uh, but we are currently working to um, transform and adapt some of the messaging so that it is more effective uh, in informing, encouraging, and engaging communities most affected. Um, and as I've indicated, the facts and the figures work for, for some people that inspire some who tend to think that way. Um, there are many, however, who are moved by the feeling and, again, the human issue. Uh, so looking at how uh, the messaging can be more inclusive um, I think is a very important thing. <clears throat> Two-thirds of, of those uninsured, as the fact state, come from communities of color. And myself being from that community and having grown and worked and played and lived in that community, I know that a lot of the facts and figures fall short with our community, quite honestly. And so to the end of solutions and how we move forward, as an artist, uh, and inspired in great part by Ann Feeney and the other performers, Joe Uline will be here tonight, and many of the other great artists in the tradition of the labor movement. I grew up listening to a lot of that music because my parents are both activists, they're ministers, and you know, the Arlo Guthrie's and the Pete Seegers and the, and the like, that we want to find a way to engage artists that can connect more and more with the younger generation to get them engaged, to understand how this is affecting them and moving forward. So I'm going to wrap up. Is that good? Okay. Thank you for your time.